Hey YouTube, you're mucking with Mick. Uh, just before I went hunting, the uh, tuna boat was in, and uh, the day before I went hunting actually, which was bad timing for us. So we went out and picked up uh, seven, eight tuna, seven tuna, the son-in-law got three. So today, back from hunting, tuna out of the freezer thawed, and we're going to can tuna for the first time. I've watched a couple of videos off of YouTube. This is our first time doing tuna. Um, we don't like the can store-bought tuna, so we're doing our own. So today we're going to, like I said, can tuna and get at it. So here's our first tuna. It's probably uh, 12 pounds. I think they were 12 pound average, 8 to 12 pounds in that area. If you notice the apron, Janelle Larson, she got it for me. It was a kind of funny ha-ha. Actually, maybe she got it for my wife. My wife made me wear it. So, I'm wearing this colored apron. We're going to start uh, cutting up this tuna. So this is uh, tuna number three. I kind of butchered the shit out of the first one. Um, I try to do it like I normally do salmon, stick the uh, knife right through and take one big fill it off. You can't do that. The second one was better. I, uh, I'm learning now to take the quarters off. So the top quarter at the uh, dorsal fin and the side fin and then the bottom belly piece, flip it over it and break it down into four pieces and it's coming better. So this is number three. So what I'm doing is I'm taking it above the head around the side fin, follow the gills down the quarter line, the half of the midpoint line, and then I take the top loin off and the bottom, and then do the other side. And actually the uh, loins are turning out like this. I've, uh, this is a half of a loin. I'm taking it off half. It's easier to pull the skin off once it's off. So it's going much better. The skin is uh, way tougher than a salmon, so you need to sharpen your knife quite often. So I use the tip of my knife to break through all the skin, and then I find the uh, mid skeletal bone. And typically, with a salmon, we go right through one piece. We can't because of the uh, I guess they want to call it the blood line down the side. Skeleton piece. Let's find it. Go right down the side of it. So there's the top loin, comes off in one piece. Now I just have to trim the blood line out, pull the few bones that are in that side, the skin off. And from this one I just do the belly. So this is the final um, tuna out of 10. This is 8 out of 10, so the final one we're going to uh, can. The last two, my daughter's boyfriend Rye, he's going to uh, turn it into just loin strips. He makes a uh, wonderful fish taco with the tuna, so we're going to leave the last two for that. So this is going to be the last uh, one for canning. So again, keep a sharp knife. Um, I probably sharpen two times during each fish. Um, a sharp knife is a lot safer. And uh, Things I always used to teach my kid, like I said in an earlier video, never cut towards your thumb. Always cut towards your chum, because you get a new chum, you can never get a new thumb. Like I said, the first one I really butchered. It's coming down to uh, the final bit here. And I've actually, uh, I think I got this down pat. 
It's only taken me eight to get it right. Well, seven. We'll see what eight happens. Here we are. We uh, brought the tuna carcasses out to the beach. Uh, it's just north of a little where we live called Gibson's Beach. And we've uh, dropped them off. There was no eagles when we first showed up here. A lot of seagulls. So we're going to see what happens. A couple of seagulls have come in and my wife just said an eagle flew into one of the trees. So we're just going to wait and see uh, if we uh, get eagles come down. It's a really nice evening. Kind of like a spring day for us in October. So uh, if the eagles come, we'll film it. It's a community we live in way down there. Right along there. And this is uh, basically our ocean view. So we're back at it again. Um, the tuna has been uh, rinsed. And we're starting to stuff it in jars now, so we're just cutting it up. I have my wife to help me today. I had a snivel to ask her for help. A friend had brought, uh, I went hunting with, come over and dropped off some caribou, and we had a drink. And now I'm uh, behind a little bit, so I'm, I'm loading the pint jars up, half pint jars up. So we're just cutting the uh, meat into small sections so I can get it into the jars and squish it down. I have a an all-American 930 canner that my kids and my wife bought me for uh, my birthday. So I'm going to fill it full of pints and we're going to uh, half pints and we're going to go out and uh, outside and we're going to we're going to do it outside. It's dark out now because my friend came over. We had to celebrate the caribou. So I'm going to do it out in the carport. We're not going to do it in the house because it uh, if it's like salmon and that it does smell the house up and I don't think I could get away with that one. So. No, she just looked at me and shook her head and gave me that your number one sign. <laughs> so no, I can't get away with doing it in the house. So I'll be out in the dark tonight doing it for a bit. Um, thanks to my friend Kevin. <laughs> he said he'd help you. Yeah, he said he'd help me, but uh, he's got other stuff he's got on his plate too with his caribou. So so there's the half pint jars. We use vinegar around the top when we do any canning, and which will be good for the tuna because uh, it is very oily. So the vinegar is going to go on. The lids will go on and then it will go out to the canner. So when we go out to the canner, I'll uh, come back to you with filming, but i got a whack of jars to fill at the moment. So see you guys in a while. And I promise I won't delay it too long. So here we are outside. It's, uh, I'm not sure what time it is. I threw my watch out a whole year, bunch of years ago. i never really been on a, on a watch time. Um, sometimes it gets me in trouble because I always try to use the excuse I forgot what time it was. Um, but we're outside and I've got the uh, canner going on my outside stove. So there's the canner. It's a 9.30 like I said. My kids bought it last this, this year, six months ago for my birthday. Kids and my wife. Um, so I'm just heating it up. I'm going to bring it up to uh, where it's going to steam off for um, 10 minutes. And then uh, make sure all the air is out of it. And I'll put the rocker on the top little wobbler and we'll start our timing for 100 minutes um, there's a rum in the corner that kind of got me right in front of the flashlight that kind of set me back when Kevin was over dealing caribou so and in behind that's my uh, new BLT that's my bike lean-to that's where I'm gonna I'm building that to store my Harleys in the corner will be my tools there's my beer fridge that fridge there is uh, for the eggs. So this is where I'm going to be hunkered down for the next hour and a half plus a bit when she starts to steam off. She's starting to steam now, so when she stops bubbling, I'll give her 10 minutes, and then uh, on goes the uh, little wobbler. So I'll see you in an hour, an hour plus 40, and uh, hopefully I don't have too much run by then. Well, we're uh, half an hour left into the process. I think it's like 10, 
Actually, it's uh, 20 to 12, midnight. I wonder why it's a little chilly out, but I got it like half an hour left. And um, the first batch will come out, and then I'll be up early in the morning to uh, do the rest. Good morning, guys. I finished late last night around 12.30, uh, getting them all cooled down and put away and you know, washed up, put in the boxes. So I'm back at it this morning, and I uh, got two of my pressure canners going, my old one and the new one the kids gave me. So i am uh, got it on 10 pounds and I'm doing uh, 100 minutes, an hour 40, as the uh, book says. In those there I got, I think there's like 50 pints total, 59 pints total, half, half pints, 59 half pints total between the two. I got eight more to do, no short, so uh, I guess I should have put two on last night. And um, I'll show you pictures when we're all done, but um, I got about another 40 minutes for these to go and then uh, the last batch and uh, I'll be out of here. Here's just a look at our weather today. Last night the moon was out, it was a half moon. It was gorgeous, stars were out, we saw a couple flocks of geese, uh, snow geese heading south. And today I guess everybody's going to be hunkered down out of this weather. So all the uh, tunas we can, we got about a, we had a hundred half pints. Of, a, <clears throat> of tuna. We had 100 pounds of fish we started so I guess a half pint to a pound. I don't know if that's uh, what normally you would get but uh, we worked it out. We saved about 125 to 150 dollars by canning our tuna. Um, again we didn't do this kind of stuff for save money. We did it to, so we knew what we were eating and uh, this is what the tuna looks like when it's uh, finished being canned. So as you see there's the tuna in the jar and we have a uh, hundred half pints it uh, tastes good we didn't eat it for a bit due to the fact that uh, after you can a hundred uh, half pints of tuna you're not really into eating it but uh, it's pretty good we'll do it again uh, next year or the year after when we run out of tuna.